This demonstration today will show you how to build a two-dimensional wood truss in RESA 3D. To start out, I'm going to go to my global parameters and review the code that I'm using. So I'm clicking on the global parameters here. I can see out of the description, solution, codes tab, I'm going to see as a third tab. I'm going to see under here wood that I have the NDS 2005-2008 ASD design. That's the one I'm going to select. I'm going to say OK. Now to start off, we're going to look at the materials for what we are using. So for under the data entry toolbar, there's a materials tab here. I'm going to open that up and I'm going to go to the wood tab. Under this wood tab here, I have several different materials that are available here as a default setting. Uh, we're going to be using the Doug Fir Southern Pine, which is under the commercial species group one with Doug Fir Southern Pine with the minimum grade level of number one. All the information is there for us ready to go. So I'm going to close this out. I'm going to start by building section sets. So if I open up the section sets on the data entry toolbar, I'm going to go over to the wood tab. Now section sets can be built here for uh, members that are similar. So for us, our cords are going to be similar and our webs are going to be similar. So we're going to be using the same shapes and the same properties for each one of the, each of the cords and each of the webs. So this is a helpful way to start your model with that. So to open the shape, I'm going to click on this little red arrow. And in here, I can tell the program what shape I want. So the thickness and diameter would be the first number. So a 2 by would be what I'm going to use. And the width here is a 2 by what? So a 2 by 4 or a 2 by 6. I'm going to leave 2 by 6, but I am going to increase the number of plies. So I click on the multiple tab, and I make sure that the 2 ply is selected. Uh, so that means that there's going to be two, uh, 2 by 6s next to each other. Now, if I was going to be using any of the glue lambs or any for um, so any produced wood that's not going to be using nominal sizes like 2 by 6, I can use full sawn size and I would tell the program the actual dimensions. But now I'm going to uncheck that and use my 2 by 6. So I'm going to say OK and I see that there's a two 2 by 6s which means that it's a 2 ply listed out for me. The program will also, I can use the type for beam. I have several different choices here, but beam will work out just fine for us. I'm going to use design list as rectangular, but since I'm going to be using a two ply, if I want the program to suggest uh, other two ply shapes, I'm going to use make sure to, to choose the rectangular double so it, it goes to the two ply suggestion shapes. Uh, the material is going to be dug for southern pine, and I'm going to use the typical design rules. Under webs, I'm going to make sure here to open this shapes up and I'm going to change this instead of a 2 by 6, I'm going to use a 2 by 4. So if I say OK and go out of there, I'm going to use the beam as well and I'm going to, since this is not 2 ply and just 1 ply, I'm going to leave the design list as rectangular. Uh, the material is also dug for a southern pine, I'm going to use typical for the design rules. So once I've laid all this out, the best way here, I'm going to just close this out, the best way to get started with a truss is to use our high level generation tools. You can find the icon at the top here, or you can go to insert structure generate. And in here you have a, a list of different tools that are available to either create beams and arcs, or you can also see at the bottom there's some plate modeling for tanks and uh, other geometries, but I'm going to choose the general truss option. So with, inside of the general truss, I can tell the program several different things, and I have a great picture here that starts me out to explain what the data inputs are. So on the start point, this X, Y, and Z, this is just where to put the lowest left corner of my truss, and I'm going to leave it at 0, 0, 0. The widths here, I can see that the heel height A and C are defined with right here. So if I wanted to have a thicker than 0, 8 heel height, I can let define that right here. I'm going to leave mine as 0. Uh, for B, I can tell the program the height of the the peak of the truss, and I'm going to maybe give it 8 feet as my height. I can tell the program to define these from either the center line, which is typical RESA 3D framing, or I can use out-to-out -out dimensions. So I'm going to leave it as center line for myself right now. I can also define scissors trusses. So with H1, I can tell the program that I have an actual elevated center here. Um, for H2, I can tell the program that there might be some offset on the side of that, um, that truss there. I'm going to leave those both as zero. But the next step here is to tell the program what type of materials I'm using. So it's assuming hot rolled at first, but I'm going to switch over to wood. And then I can change all of my web configurations. A Pratt A is probably what the one I'm going to use, but I have different options, Pratt B, Warren A, Warren B, 
or X configuration. So prod A is probably a nice one for our wood truss. Now for panel points, I need to define the panel length. So that's the point between the two panels there. So I'm gonna tell the program here, starting out that I'm gonna use three feet for my first panel point. And then I'm gonna use a comma to design, designate the second one, which is four, and the third one, which is four. So we'll have four increments on one side, and then four on the other, uh, excuse me, three on the one side, and then three on the other. Now, the three on the other, to mirror that, I'm gonna say four, comma, four, comma, three, which is telling the program that the outer panel points are three feet from the edges, and then four and four on the inside. Now, I can change here the section sets, top chord, bottom chord. They are going to be chords, so they're actually already set. But the verticals and diagonals, I knew, do need to put in some webs. So I can change that to be webs there. Now I can do things like tell the program to make these all pin-pin segments, so it breaks up the chord into, section, into actual different segments. Or by default, it's going to run it the entire length. And that's what I'm going to leave it as. Now, when you're in here, you may also want to examine your unbraced length. So, for you can tell the program your unbraced length in plane and out of plane. So, in plane here, what I'm going to say, tell them the program to use is the un, in plane is going to be using the webs actually for so in order to tell the program to use this different spacing of, of webs I can use a command that's called segment which means every time you hit a node that's going to be a brace point so I'm going to do that for the both top and bottom plane uh, bottom here so I'm going to say segment in plane so every time it goes into for the uh, bracing for in plane it's going to be the webs and now out of plane I'm going to assume some sort of bracing now purlins might be something you might consider if you use your sheathing to the top and bottom so for the top maybe we're going to be using purlins so let's say we're going to be using four foot on center for the bottom maybe we're sheathing to the bottom cord so in there I'm going to actually put a zero which means it's going to be sheathed these two numbers represent the uh, unbraced lengths for the column type buckling for the U Euler buckling. Now the other ones here we have LC, uh, L comp top and L comp bottom and those are in respect to the compression flange so we're going to actually worry about what the top and bottom faces of these members are. So on the top and bottom here are be slightly different. For the top, on the top cord, the top is actually going to be that bracing here, that purlin. So we're going to tell the program 4 is going to be bracing that and the bottom there is going to be segment which is also those uh, web members and the bottom is going to be actually segment because that's the the web members framing into the top of the bottom cord and the bottom of that bottom cord is going to be the zero which is that sheathing so if I place all of that in here I'm going to say OK and then I see that a separate window gets opened up and now this is helpful if you had several uh, different members in your model this would be the only thing highlighted since we don't we only have the truss I'm going to close that down and just look at it in the main view and what I see here is that I have a truss in place and I can uh, go ahead and put some boundary conditions on this truss and then we would be ready to load it so for boundary conditions I'm going to click on this, this here does add boundary conditions and I can tell the program to use either free fixed pinned and roller and for a typical truss you might use a pinned on one side so I'm going to highlight this one side and the other side I'm going to use a roller so I click on the right here I'm going to go right back into this dialog and use roller and say apply and then I just highlight there that truss so the, the model here is now completed with a boundary conditions and its members and to confirm that we can take a look at, at what it looks like here. I'm going to click this rendered button a couple times and we can see here in isometric view that I have a 2 ply 2x6 two on the top and I have my 2x4s um, as my web members. So this is a completed truss ready for you to start loading and building the rest of your model. Thank you for watching today's demonstration.